So drove back in the Jag this morning. This thing's a beast. <laughs> it's a beast. I've never been in a car before that where you have to watch the speedo so carefully because it never feels like you're going particularly fast. And then you look down and realise you're doing national speed limit. You're only at a thousand revs. Um, it really does hoon it along, it just effortlessly quick. And it goes up hills, like really steep hills that other cars you're dropping down multiple gears in. It just monsters them. <laughs> it really is quite a lot of fun. And the fuel gauge doesn't really move that much either. Maybe it's the uh, do it all car. Yeah, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And no engine management lights again, so. I think we're going to go down to Moors and find out how much I owe them because as far as I'm concerned for the moment for the moment that's fixed. Right guys, you old school choppers will know we're back to Chops Garage Basics here, back to the early cars we always did, a nice little Toyota Igo. And you can see I'm straight into the standard Toyota Igo tart-up process, which is get the wheel trims off because they're always scuffed give them a sand down, give them a lick of paint so they look mint, get into the wheels, stone chip the inside here or gloss black whatever your choice is to tidy up that because you can see that through the spokes makes it look a lot tidier obviously give the bodywork a bit of a buff quick detail end of the engine bay some tyre shine on and you're good to go we do need to get a rear light for this one I forgot that it's got a broken rear light so we need to order that up to tidy it up um, so I'll hop on and do that I want to get a little new gear knob or um, a sticker to go over the top so we can see that again I don't want it. I've never seen one wear quite that much it's only on 46,000 miles this one I got it from Phil you see I need to give the seats a base of the seats a clean as well uh, I got it from Phil down at Moores this is the car he got and he had he ran around in for a bit he's put a new MOT on it uh, oh no, it was a while back. It might need another, I think it's October, so I might need to put another one on. It's got some service history 14, 15, 16, 19, and 20. So it was the 8, 20, so I'll probably do another oil and filter change on that before it goes out the door. Um, he knows the owner of this car, he's known him for a long time. So we'll get a service done as well. Um, these are just brilliant little first time cars or just that little run around 2013 63 plate let's say 46,000 miles they're just brilliant little cars those of you who've seen the channel have seen me sell loads of these bar one that had a um alternator strange alternator drain on it it took a while to identify they've all been problem free um they're just i mean you're doing 50 60 miles to the gallon you're paying what 20 pound road tax i think it is certainly not more than 30 on these they cost peanuts to fix if stuff goes wrong on them they and they're just the easiest cars in the world to work on uh, so they're if, if you don't know they're a three cylinder chain driven engine um that again it's, it's crazy cheap to buy parts for uh things are mechanical not hydraulic so by that what i mean is your clutch cable is um on this is actually a clutch cable not hydraulic so you can adjust it so this one was riding a little bit high so we nipped in quickly adjusted it to set it in the middle because they don't get reset a lot of the time um yeah and just i mean if you have to put an engine in this thing it's peanuts they just are the cheapest cars i think i've said in previous videos if you want to start flipping cars this is a good one to start to do if you want to start working on cars this is a good one to do because they come apart like just a big meccano set they just really are uh or lego for those of you that Mind you, my kind of stuff about, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, just just mega mega easy to work on. Um, problems wise with these, you get leaks in the boot sometimes. It's always the seal around this rear light as a general rule. So you pop that out, put a bit of sealant around, put it back in again. That stops that. Like I say, a lot of them you drive the clutch will ride very high, but it's because it's never been adjusted. So you just nip in the engine bay, adjust the nut down. That solves that. Um, the engines are tough. I've sold these with over 100,000 miles on. They're chain driven, so there's no cam belts, like I said, to have to do. So it's just oil and filter. And they literally put them at the very front of the car. So you can service these, if you so wish, Ooh, on the ground, because you can get to it all really easily. 
So yeah, they're just um, they're just cracking little cars. I haven't done one for a while, have I? I haven't done one for a while. But yeah, if someone out there is looking to sort of um, reduce running costs for their daily driver, these are great. Or if someone wants a first car, because the insurance group is mega low on them. The Toyota version, obviously there's the 10, what is it, the 107 and the Citroen C1 are uh, the same car, exactly the same car underneath. They shared the platform together um, to try and keep the insurance costs down. Um, they all share panels and so forth. So it, uh, well, obviously apart from slightly different headlights and that, uh, it kept the cost down. So the insurance on these is mega, mega low. They are like a baked bean can. <laughs> they are noisy, um, but they're quite fun. You get them on the boil, they're actually quite fun. Um, so yeah, highly recommended. So this one's really tidy. There's no body work for me to have to do. And then I say I need to swap out a rear light, but I don't have to get any paint out at all. Um, Phil's obviously been looking after it the last few years, so I know mechanically it's sound. The mileage is decent. He actually let his brother run around in it for about four or five months. Um, so it's had a good old test after he bought it from the customer. So yeah, so today we're just gonna give it a bit of a tidy up and whip it up for sale. There we go, quick going over with stone chip. Such a simple, quick thing to do. It makes a world of difference. Well, does it make, really make the world of difference? <laughs> makes a big difference between yours and other cars doing these little things like this. Again, you know, the wheel trims aren't massively scuffed up. A lot of retailers would stick it out there like that. But if I take next half hour tidying these wheel trims up, oh, I didn't see that one had a crack. Um, I'll do what I can about that. But if I yeah, if I take the take a few minutes to tidy these up, um, again, when I then machine polish the rest of the car and they come and see mine versus other people's, mine's going to be the one that looks the cleanest and tidiest. Um, they're not going to be able to pick it apart because people, after all, when it's buying cars, people are magpies. It's how shiny it is. So quickly, just use the soldering iron to tidy that little crack up. Uh, melted it on the back there and then just slightly blended it up we're going to run the sander over in a bit blended up the front of the crack there so that just tidies that up a little bit before we start uh, giving them a lick of paint so just using this little electric sander someone bought me at christmas actually i haven't used it yet it's really nice and quiet this thing much quieter than the other sanding stuff i use um just got some 180 on it that came with it I'm just feathering down this. We're not going to start filling and making things perfect. You, in this game, a car this value, you know, time-wise, you couldn't be doing that. But we're just going to feather down all the scratches, and then there'll be some plastic primer, some filler primer, some silver, and some lacquer, and we'll be done. So all the scratches have been feathered out now, apart from the very, very deepest stuff. We've got pretty much most of it out. The key thing to do now is key up. So what by that one means I need to use a scuff pad and rough off all the bits I haven't sanded on. Otherwise the paint won't take to it. Then we'll give them the clean off, then the plastic primer, then the filler primer. So for those of you who haven't seen them before, this is a scuff pad, a bit like a scotch pad. You could use the green side of a scouring pad from the kitchen if you wanted to, if you're going to be using a filler primer. Um, this is about the equivalent of 600 grit, I think. Um, literally just give it a quick rub over, get in all the nooks and crannies and make sure the paint's got something to take to. That's what you're looking for, a matte finish versus the shiny finish. I wish someone developed like a just a dust on spray that keyed the surface up ready for you. Because this is a boring, blooming job. Just rubbing this all down and getting in the nooks and crannies. Just dust it over, creates a tacky surface and then drop straight on. Make life a lot easier. So we fill a primered and then we've given it a coat of silver you know there's only three because the fourth wheel trim was bang on didn't have any marks on it so no point doing more, any more work than i need to so we're going to let that go off for a bit now because in my experience if you put the lacquer on too quickly with these plastic uh, surfaces it can make the uh, make the, the the silver bleed and then it go, ends up with a dull finish on it so i'm going to leave this for a while before putting the lacquer on but what i will do is put a dust coat of the lacquer on first to make sure it's grabbing properly before we put any more on so uh, we'll leave those for a bit now, I'll have a bite of lunch and we'll come back to that. So we put the coat of lacquer on now. This is the original wheel and these are mine. There's a slight variation if you get close. I could have used a little bit more lacquer perhaps, but I don't really want to open another can. 
I say that about another can because I'm using 2K and once you mix 2K you can't use it later on so I go for the small cans which means that I don't waste a load of it. I'd have done a big can if I had the Acadian ready to put more lacquer on but I didn't. Bit of an ouch moment when I realised we only had one manual key so James from Key to My Cars just swung by, he was in the area, 145 quid including the VAT. I've now got a proper full remote for it as well. I don't think it has sold too well with the just a manual key so that's one of the first bits of spend we've got on it uh, other spend will be like I say the servicing kit the new MOT so even when they come in clean like this guys as we know it's never uh, a case of just wash them and stick them out and there we have it guys a few hours of uh, cleaning refurb of the wheel trims and we've got a little Igo that is looking immaculate in fact, the bodywork on it is fantastic. It really is. There's only one, well, one mark to talk about here on the corner. It's a little bit of a scuff there. It's been touched in, but you have to go looking for it, really. But overall now, this is one little mint I go. I've got to leave the doors open so that the seats fully dry out from their wet clean. I'd missed that it had sat nav. It's been a while since I was looking at one. So yeah, nice spec with auxiliary input, sat nav. Oop, auxiliary input, sat nav, air con, electric front windows. They never have electric rear windows because all they have is pop out glass. So you let it air out. I think I might photograph it in the morning. Ordered up a new gear knob for it. So I think that spoils the interior. And ordered up a replacement rear light. I always go for a used replacement rear light if you go for a brand new one it'll make the old one look funny and you'll have to replace both so you want the one that's sort of aged the same amount so got one of those on the way with those two bits swapped over this is going to be a little minter a little minter i think what's true says retail on this is 4995 with uh, the mileage that this has got uh, i'll make a cracking little car so on to the next one Oh yes, I am beginning to wish I positioned the Mercedes better before I took the seat out because obviously I don't want to reconnect the battery now for fear of it upsetting the airbags. So it's kind of like stuck in the middle here and being an automatic, I can't get it into neutral because I need power to the key to get it into neutral. I don't know if there's any way of overriding that. It obviously means as I'm cleaning stuff I'm going to struggle to squeeze it all in.